In this problem, we have a region given by these equations. It's a bounded region in the plane. And we have to rotate it about the line x equals 8. And then we have to find the volume of the resulting solid. So let's go ahead and start by giving a graph of our region. So this line here, uh, 8 minus x, uh, looks something like this. If you plug in 0 for x, it puts you up here at 8. And if you plug in uh, 8 for x, it puts you down here at 0. So that's what this line looks like. y equals 0 is a horizontal line. x equals 0 is a vertical line. And then y equals 4 is right about here. So we're looking at this region here. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw the region down here a little bit bigger. I purposely did it up here small and rough, and now let's try to do a better job. So this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. So this is 8. This will be 4. And it does something like this, and then it looks like it comes down right here. And we're spinning it about the line y, uh, x equals 8. So we're spinning it right here at this vertical line. So you'll notice that if you draw a vertical rectangle, so if I draw a rectangle here, that it will be different if I draw it here. And what I mean by that is the top of the rectangle, in this case, is 4. But in this case over here, it's 8 minus x. So that means that we would have to split this up and then do two separate integrals to find the volume. So that, that's a lot of work. So what we'll do is we will redraw our picture and we'll use a horizontal rectangle so that we can do this problem with only one integral. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. Here's 8. And then here's 4. Let's come this way and then I'll come down like this. And then we're spinning it about the line x equals 8. So we're going to spin it right here. And let's draw our horizontal rectangle. So because we have a horizontal rectangle, that means we have functions of y. So we should probably take this here and solve it for x so that we have a function of y. To do that, we can add x to both sides. That will give us x plus y equals 8. So that means that x is equal to 8 minus y. So this is a function of y. That's what this function is right here. So this, this right here is x equals 8 minus y. All right, so now we're going to draw big R and little r in our picture. So recall that big R is the full distance. So it's the distance from the far end of the rectangle to the axis of revolution, and it's a function of y. That's big R of y. It's the full distance from the far end to the axis. No matter where we draw the rectangle, we are in luck because big R of y is equal to 8. Little r of y is the distance from the close end to the axis of revolution. So here's the trick. Whenever you're thinking of functions of y, in other words, whenever you have a horizontal rectangle, it's right minus left. If you have vertical rectangles, it's top minus bottom. So this distance here is 8. This distance here is x equals 8 minus y. All right, and this is x equals 8. So right minus left. So little r of y will be x equals 8 minus x equals 8 minus y. So it's 8 minus 8 minus y. That's the key. That is the hardest thing for people to understand. Remember, it's right minus left. It's x equals 8 minus x equals 8 minus y. If you're confused, think simple. Pretend it was 8 and 3. This distance is 5, but at the same time, it's x equals 8 minus x equals 3, which is x equals 5. And it's obvious that it's 5, but think of it as x equals 8 minus x equals 3 to get this distance here. Same thing here. To get this distance here, we take x equals 8 minus x equals 8 minus y. So r of little r of y is equal to, well, it looks like the 8s cancel, and negative and negative is positive, so we just get y. Wow, talk about cleaning up. So the volume has a pi, because the disk method has a pi. And we're integrating with respect to y. 
So it's Y limits of integration. So we go from 0 to 4, so from the bottom up. And it's big R squared, so 8 squared, minus little r squared, y squared. And then we have the dy. So this is pi, definite integral from 0 to 4. So parentheses 64 minus y squared, and then dy. All right, this is equal to... So integrating this, uh, integrating the 64, that'll give us uh, 64y minus, and then integrating this will give us y cubed over 3. And then we're going from 0 to 4. All right, so first you plug in the 4, so it's pi. So this is 64 times 4 minus, and then plug in the 4 here. 4 cubed again is 64 over 3. And then when you plug in 0, it all goes away. Really nice, because they're all zeros. So this is pi. Um, I guess we could do this by hand. Um, I could multiply, I could do the following, like this. This is 64 times 4, times 3 over 3 minus 64 over 3. Really clever. Uh, well, maybe not that clever, but... Uh, so this is pi. So then uh, you would get 4 times 3, so you get 12. So you get 12 times 64 over 3 minus 64 over 3. So this is pi. 12 times 64 minus 1 times 64 is 11 times 64. I guess I could have just used a calculator. Let me, let me just plug it into my calculator and see what this is. So 11 times 64, whoops, 11 times 64 over 3 gives me a decimal, but I can turn it into a fraction, and it gives me 704 uh, over 3. So this is 704 over 3 pi. You can turn um, decimals into fractions. Let me see if I have my calculator here and I can show you. I do. I do have it here. So check this out. So if you do 11 times 64 and hit enter, okay, and then um, divide it by 3. Oh, that just gives you 704 over 3. Uh, I did it like this in my, uh, I did it like this. And then I hit math, and then enter, enter, and it turns it back into a fraction. So uh, to turn decimals into fractions, just hit math, and then hit enter uh, two times. I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.